I would argue that there is no school anywhere that lives the value of collaboration better than Foster does. And we bake that into our program here so that you cannot escape Foster without learning how to work with others, um, learning from others and because of others. first question that I wanted to transition into was really talking about school specific. You know, a lot of the candidates that come to us, they have a list of schools and then they get into the admissions process and it's really difficult for them to differentiate, you know, between schools. So how do you all think about um, how Foster differentiates itself from other programs? Great question. And I'll take that one first. The reality is I want to acknowledge I think probably most top MBA programs have more similarities than they have differences. And so as a candidate, if that's what you're struggling with, trying to differentiate the programs, you're not alone, because I do think we probably have a lot of overlap. But if I'm talking to a student and I've only got a couple minutes, what I always want them to walk away with is an understanding of maybe three of our most important pillars for what makes Foster, Foster. The first one is gonna be our location and the connection that we have to the Seattle community. I am actually incredibly impressed on a daily basis with how well connected the University of Washington and the Foster School is to the city of Seattle. And I would argue that there's probably not another MBA program in a major city that is as well connected to that city as Foster is to Seattle. And that gives our students a huge amount of opportunity and a huge amount of advantage when it comes to recruiting and networking, internship, consulting projects. It really does transform the student experience. And it also means that we can give our students incredible access to the professionals who are in the roles that maybe someday they're going to want to have. You know, I think in a a typical year, we estimate that it's over 2,000 business professionals that walk through our doors here at Foster to interact with our students in one way or another. So access to the city of Seattle is huge. I would also say maybe a big part of that, the city of Seattle specifically, is the connection that we have to the tech industry. You know, Foster is not a one-dimensional school by any means. We do a lot of things very well, but probably the one thing that is pretty undisputed about what we do better than almost every other program is going to be placement within tech. Again, we, we have a lot of students who go into other fields also, but tech is definitely the right now the, the driver for what a lot of our students are interested in. So that all wrapped into Seattle is bullet point number one. Number two is going to be the ROI proposition. And it's, I think, pretty incredible, the, the product that we deliver to our students for relatively low tuition nationally. Um, you know, we've got the highest or at least among the highest job placement rates of all the top MBA programs in the country. And we do that with one of the lowest base prices of tuition. So again, it's, the, it's this measure between the low inputs and really high, impressive job placement outputs. And then again, of course, it's not just that we're placing folks in any old job. I mean, we, our graduates are getting really impressive career opportunities. I think last year, our average starting salary for our graduates was about 147. And it was about 80% of our students who received a signing bonus, which brought the average first year compensation up to almost 190. So again, the quality of the output, the quality of the opportunities that our students get for the amount of input and tuition dollars it's pretty incredible. So that ROI proposition is number two. And then number three is going to sound cliche, but it, it really is a community. And I think this is the most important one. I recognize every single MBA program has its values that it's built on. And I don't think that's particularly unique. I, I think every school is probably very values driven in one way or another. It just so happens though that the values that Foster is really based on, it, it's all about this community and collaboration mindset. I would argue that there is no school anywhere that lives the value of collaboration better than Foster does. And we bake that into our, into our program here so that you cannot escape Foster without learning how to work with others, um, learning from others and because of, of others instead of in spite of others. The collaborative mindset, I think, is the single unifying value, which maybe is going to be a different unifying value than what you might find at some other programs. Thank you for that. I mean, I know you're really close with the city of Seattle. So if you ever get season tickets to maybe Mariners or any other sport teams like Seahawks, definitely send them my way. <laughs> you know where to find me. So that's fabulous. And, you know, when you think about ROI, obviously people are talking about it now where Supreme Court is not going to allow this, this kind of payback of loans. So it's on people's minds. So thank you very much for bringing that up. Greg. Yeah. That was such a comprehensive answer, but is there anything 
that maybe applicants couldn't find beyond what you just said, like on the website about Foster that maybe makes them unique? Anything else worth maybe mentioning to candidates? That's a great question. And a lot of candidates ask me that directly. I want to give credit to our website team. I think we do a good job of putting all the information out there. I would preface this by saying that as a candidate, if you're really digging, you'll probably find it somewhere on the website. But there's a difference between seeing the information on a screen and actually feeling it. Eric, this might be a bit of a cop-out to your question, but I think the one thing you can't really get on the website is being here and experiencing it for yourself. We've got a number of opportunities for folks to actually visit campus, whether it's something like our Fostering MBA Access event or our Women's Brunch, or even just a shadow day. You know, I, I think actually being here and getting on campus and sitting in a class, meeting the students, that's gonna deliver a feeling and an experience that you can't get online. And I can attest to that. I have been there and that wonderful building there in the background is absolutely fabulous. There's an incredible story behind it of sustainability. And I think it speaks to really what Foster's all about. I can certainly plus one on that. Let's uh, transition a little bit. I've been working with Knowing Now for, I think, two years or maybe you, maybe your brother. I don't really know anymore. <laughs> I didn't know you were a twin. So I don't know who I've been working with. But um, a lot of the clients that we have at Magoosh and Access come from under-resourced backgrounds, underserved backgrounds. How does Foster really focus on leveling the playing field for applicants from underrepresented or economically disadvantaged backgrounds? Thanks for asking that question, Eric. At the Foster School, we do value diversity, and we show this by numerous ways. The one that I like to always make a point in referencing is our partnership with diversity organizations, Magoosh being one of them within AXIS and uh, Consortium, MLT, Forte, Ramba are other partnerships that we do have that allow us to be able to be transparent, accessible, and visible to candidates that may not identify with the predominant group of students that might be applying to an MBA competitive program. In addition to that, uh, our commitment with partnerships has dates back to 2016, but even before then, we've had numerous uh, diversity initiatives that really allow students from diverse backgrounds to feel valued, seen, and welcomed at the Foster School. And we continue to do that through numerous ways. Another way is through our student organizations. For example, we have Out in Business for students who identify as LGBTQIA+, as well as Diversity in Business, which is broken down into three affinity groups, uh, currently Latino, Black, and Asian American. And through Diversity in Business, we are able to support our prospective applicants and our current students as well to kind of get a sense of how they belong and and what they can do at the Foster School to bring in their own diversity and unique lived experiences. In addition to that, at the University of Washington, stepping out of the Foster School a little bit, we do have the Office of Minority Affairs and Diversity, as well as the Graduate Student Equity and Excellence Center, which also focuses on supporting first generation and students from diverse backgrounds in graduate level education. Those are some of the resources. And within the Office of Admissions, we also hire student workers who are in the MBA program, both in the full-time and in the evening, to help us do that line of work and help us answer questions that, that students may have. For example, uh, I mentioned our diversity partnerships. We do have consortium liaisons, Forte ambassadors, LGBTQIA veterans, and diversity coordinators that really help us move that needle forward to where we want to be diversely here at the Foster School. That's just to name a few of the uh, initiatives that we have going on at the Foster School. And I would say continuously, we continue to do that. Two events that we do have upcoming that support that mission are also fostering MBA access, which will happen November 2nd and 3rd of this upcoming academic year, as well as Women's Brunch on October 22nd. That's just in alignment to how we serve and make uh, foster accessible to groups from marginalized communities who historically have not been represented in MBA programs.